Hi, and good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for joining us today. Today, we are talking about the PyCap and the Path Foundation design. My name is Andres Verbe, and I'm a sales uh, manager here at the Master Series. Today, I'm joined uh, by my colleague Patrick McKinley. I hope uh, everybody can hear me well. So before I start uh, our presentation, uh, I would like to quick, I would like to quickly share some practical information about the GoToWebinar. The control uh, panel can be hidden with the red arrow button. Questions or messages uh, can be sent with the with the chat option. Feel free to type in your questions at any time during the webinar. We will answer them during the session, but we will also review the questions at the end of the webinar. As usual, this webinar is being recorded and we will post it uh, to our channels and send out uh, to your email address. Quickly about the, the agenda. At first, uh, Patrick will overview the backup and the Path Foundation design and the basic rules. And after that, uh, I will show you how you can design them inside the 3D structure model using uh, our master uh, master frame, general frame analysis program. And as usual, we will finish with the QEA section. So now let me hand over the, the presentation to Patrick to, to talk about the, the background of the, uh, the foundation design. So, Thank you, Andras. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you. Just I'm gonna make you as a presenter. Yep, and then I can share my screen. Okay. Okay. Um, hopefully, you can see the right screen. Yeah. Let me just check. Okay. That's good. Uh, hello, everybody. Yes, my name is Patrick. I'm one of the engineers here at Master Series, and I'm going to take you through just a little bit of an introduction on some basic rules and input parameters that you might have for the design of pad caps and pad foundations, especially when you're using uh, Master Series software. Um, just to give you a bit of a background and understanding maybe of some rules and parameters that you either are familiar with already, uh, need a refresher on, or have never heard before possibly. So as usual, feel free to ask any questions uh, and give any feedback of your own experiences or uh, in regards to the design of the foundation types we'll, we will be covering here. So first, uh, we'll look at pile caps. So pile caps, they're effectively a transfer structure, which transfers the loads from the superstructure via a column into the ground through piles. So I won't be going through any design examples here, just some basic rules and parameters that you might want to understand first before you do input into the master series. Um, first, I want to point out some decent references you might uh, want to know about, uh, some short ones. Uh, I, I like the iStruct D technical notes, uh, which is a series of uh, notes that are guidance notes that they made uh, for the structural engineer magazine so um, one of them is here designing a pile cap and it just goes through some some basic information you need to know including the strut and tie methodology and, and on from that we've got another technical concrete design note um, from the concrete center uh, that's also on the structural engineer, which goes into the strut and tie method as well. But and if you wanted further reading, we've got our uh, the cement and concrete industry publication, and you get all the questions you have answered within that. Um, so some references there, and I'll be referencing those throughout. Um, for for setting out of our piles, uh, if we're using friction piles, the min minimum spacing is three times the diameter of the pile due to interactions between the friction piles. With the end bearing piles, our minimum spacing can reduce. And in master series, we can input as low as 1.5 times the diameter of the pile. And where the pile spacings exceed three times the diameter, it is customary to carry out punch and shear checks on the piles. So it's recommended to take a thickness of around two to two and a half times the diameter of your pile 
uh, for your depth of pile cap to avoid any uh, to avoid punch and shear being critical. The distance from the edge of the pile to the edge of the pile cap is 150 mil for circular piles, which includes a bit of tolerance for the insulation of the piles. I think it's about 75 millimeters. Uh, when we get into square piles, that 150 millimeter increases due to tolerance on the rotation of the square pile. And I may as well take advantage of the uh, 3D model I have here um, and show you what that means. So let's say, if, for example, we have our uh, square pile in here. If that, by any chance, is rotated by a full uh, 45 degrees, then you can see how close we're getting to the edge. So uh, with the master series, we take, uh, I think it's point, around 0.2 times the, the pile width uh, in this instance for edge distance for square piles. Properties of the pile that will affect your design will be the dimension and shape of the pile, which we covered, its safe working load, and whether it is M bearing or a friction pile. So the choice of the pile won't have too much of an effect on the design of your pile cap, whether it is driven or board or, or steel or precast, con precast concrete. But I'll, I'll note that um, you'll have to consider your reinforcement and how, how it all ties in together if you are using uh, reinforcement in your in your concrete pile. Um, so the penetration of the pile into the pile cap is usually around 75 millimeters, and or uh, would normally we have the placement of the bottom reinforcement over sealing act. So it's worth noting that for your uh, cover distances. So and some other practical notes: if the pile cap itself is only one or two piles, uh, we will need orthogonal restraint in one or two directions. I've sh shown it in one direction there, uh, and that uh, is usually in the form of a ground beam. Uh, we only need it in that direction. If we had a one pile cap, we would have it in our uh, X and Y direction. And if we're dealing with pile caps with three or more piles, restraint will be built in by design in both directions. Also, it's cons considering the depth of the pile caps, which is usually dictated by shear, uh, the, the depth will affect your setting out, uh, i.e. The, the pile cutoff levels and bottom of foundation levels. So, that will require a manual check, uh, and if possible, try and keep it to one depth uh, on a site or a job, uh, or, or, or two, if you're looking to minimise costs in labour, you, you, you don't want to be designing pile caps or 500 mil DP or 700 mil DP, or you, you want to keep it all to the one foundation depth at least, and those pile cut up depths, uh, you want to keep, or pile cut off levels, you want to keep them consistent across the site uh, and rationalise those. Uh, so, into the, the methodology of the design. So you can use beam theory or the strut and tie method for designing pie caps within master series. The beam method I won't get into, uh, it's, a, it's a common method, but you should uh, understand the principles of that. But I'll chat a little bit about the strut and tie uh, method or model that we maybe aren't as familiar with. Um, so the loads from the column will be split between the piles as long as they're equidistant from the column. So they're, they're standard formulas to use uh, if uh, this is the case, uh, and you can find those in the, uh, easily in the ISTOP technical notes, for example. But uh, the master series pile cap module obviously allows for offsets as well. There's other options which Andreas can get into in a short while. The strut and time model is a method of modeling complex stress patterns and reinforced concrete as triangulated models, and this is a perfect example here. So they've been developed for the purpose of simplifying the transfer of loads through concrete and the load paths, calculating the forces and then designing the different elements, i.e. struts or compressive load paths or ties or tension load paths and then our nodes which are, are intersections. And in the case of a pile cap, the bottom reinforcement of the pile cap is assumed to be acting as a tie and a truss model rather than, a, rather than tension reinforcement of a beam and bending as assumed in the, in the beam method. So some parameters for, for pile caps, it is required that the angle of the truss is typical taking, typically taken at 45 degrees, um, but set no shallower than approximately 22 degrees, like 21.8 to be precise. And simply, the struts in work in compression and to a compressive strength as a concrete, and the tie tension works to the tensile capacity of the reinforcement. So the compression struts, they can be aided by confinements from surrounding reinforcement or concrete, and the tension reinforcement requires sufficient anchorage. Um, so that means a, a long enough length 
of uh, reinforcement and a good enough bond of concrete. So our, our nodes uh, where struts and ties meet or intersect or change direction, we have our uh, three nodes in this case, which also need checked. So nodes are subject to different stresses acting in different directions and are, are critical. And these are almost like the connections between the elements of the strut and tie model. The various nodes take the compressive stress, the strength of the concrete and apply different factors to it depending on the, the location. So we've got a, a CCC node here, which is compression, compression, compression. Uh, we've got a CCT node here uh, at our pile here, which is compression, compression and tension. But we don't have any CTT nodes uh, in this uh, instance where it will be tension, tension, and compression. So all these design calculations are taken account for with the master series module. And, and I have to admit, it's nice having the ICAPs integrated now um, to be able to do the design all in one place as opposed to taking the module model and having the manually input. So that obviously saves a lot of time and, and potential mistakes. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the path foundations now. Again, I can refer to a technical note from the I struck D here, um, as you'll probably recognize me now. I'm a bit of a fan of these because they just they just uh, cover cover most of the basics. Even if you are doing the design in a uh, in a software, it's good it's good to refer to something which is short and sweet and makes you uh, it gives you a good refresher. Um, pads are shallow foundations that are suitable for light structures and firm soils and heavy structures on firm soils on thick strata. So they're not really suitable for just sand, just gravels and, and made grounds. Uh, they're very cost effective, easy to design and construct, and they're, they're obviously a very popular form of uh, foundation. Uh, they're typically formed less than three meters from ground level, but really you want to be keeping uh, your total depth to foundation level to be around one meter for low rise buildings. Uh, for pads, the thickest we want to go to really is about two meters. Uh, any deeper for the pad itself is impractical, and we want to start looking then at deep foundations um, and that gets into your piles then. Uh, as a responsible designer, we need to be aware about soil retention issues as well for uh, making uh, foundations at that depth. Um, if we can primarily avoid introducing too much tension into the concrete, we can get away without having to reinforce our pads. We can do this primarily by trying to reduce bending stresses and just into the bottom face of the pad. So Eurocode uh, it sets out some rules for unreinforced pads based on the depth to uh, projection ratio. Uh, of two to one. So, if that is the case, if our depth is twice the projection, we can assume there's no bending stresses and just introduce into the concrete and therefore negate the need for uh, reinforcement. So, we've got some uh, different ratios here. I'll, I'll turn them on. So, Uh, Eurocode sets out some rules for unreinforced pads based on the depth to projection ratio, which considers the depth of the pad to its projection from the outside face of the column. Uh, to quickly be able to negate the need for tension reinforcement, if we have a depth to projection ratio of, of 2 to 1, we can assume there's uh, no bending stress in the concrete and therefore negate the need for reinforcement. Um, we can also use an equation set out in Eurocode, which takes into consideration the tensile strength of the concrete. And the bearing stress of the soil to get a reduced ratio from two to one all the way down to one to one. Um, and we've also got we have the equation in the error code. We've also got a uh, a little table in our designing a concrete pad foundation. So, given us our different uh, concrete rates and our ground pressures, we can we can figure out what our ratio is there. Just if we want to do a quick check on whether we need reinforcement or not. Or the third option is we can work out the stresses manually and have an even greater ratio, which is what our master series module does. It it it, uh, it calculates the the stresses so to check if we need tension reinforcement or not, so you can get away with uh, even even greater size foundations for that. So uh, the beauty of the master series integrated pad designer allows us to instantly size the pads big enough to spread the loads, but small enough to limit the stresses in the base. So uh, we've also got our uh, reinforced pads. So if we do fall outside of these limits, reinforcement can be introduced to deal with shear and bending in the foundation, especially if the pad has a large area to depth ratio. 
Um, bearing, overturning, and sliding failures covers both unreinforced and reinforced foundations, whereas uh, our structural failures differ between our mass concrete pads, which are unreinforced and, and our reinforced pads. Uh, we'd also need to consider bending moments from the columns, creating uplift in the foundation. And in these cases, we want the pad to be designed so that the resulting forces lie within the middle third of the base. Uh, as outside of this reduces the contact area in the soil as, as it tries to lift. Um, finally, just uh, partial factors. Uh, when checking the bearing stresses under the soil, we have to look at our, our geo factors. And when designing the concrete pad itself, we're looking at the, the structural factors. So that concludes my uh, introduction on the pilot and pad foundations. Now, Andrew is going to take you through uh, how they're applied within mass series itself. So I'll hand you back to Matt. Uh, Andres there. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Patrick. Okay. Thank you, Patrick. I hope everybody can see my screen. So let's jump straight into the, into the master master frame, our general frame analysis software. Okay, uh, we are looking at at a 3D uh, steel model with both composite and non-composite members, uh, with bracing, with wall bracing uh, on all sides. If we turn on the load, then then we will see that various dead and live loads were placed on the model. Uh, we have line loads, perimeter line loads, and uh, we have uh, a patch load here as well. And we, and we can see that uh, wind load also has been applied in all uh, principal uh, directions. Okay, if we run uh, the analysis, then you can see in the, in the table analysis result, uh, and we can use the table analysis result to have a look at uh, the reactions. So support reactions, show reactions, let's see only just the, the Y axis and show values. Looking at the maximum values here at the bottom, then we can see that this time we are ranging from 200 kilonewton uh, to 800 kilonewton, meaning simple path foundation uh, hopefully must be uh, suitable uh, at this time. Okay, let's uh, move to the path design. Path design is part of our uh, general uh, general. Uh, concrete number design. When we click on the concrete design, the program will to design all the concrete beams and columns in the model with the proposed reinforcement and of course create and design uh, concrete parts. Concrete parts are only associated with columns with supports and uh, uh, as it use uh, as it uses the analysis results of these nodes uh, in the calculation. When we first start uh, the concrete design module, the concrete global basic data screen appears. In this dialog, we can set a bunch of basic data and, and defaults for BIM, curtailment, auto design, covers, and aggregate, etc. Now let's quickly see the path uh, parameters. In the general field, uh, we can ignore shear uh, and some service moments if we want. And if we don't have service cases, then we can ask the program uh, to estimate uh, the service forces from ultimate forces by reusing uh, uh, by an appropriate uh, factor. In the concrete part, uh, we can set the concrete grade and the concrete density for our, for our path design. In the reinforcement, here you can set uh, the default covers, select the style uh, of, the, uh, of the reinforcement, which can be straight bar, top bar, and full height U bars. And that is also an option uh, to design all parts and as mass concrete. So all the parts uh, will be 
uh, design with no uh, reinforcement, no bars. Here in the in the loads, we can set a default uh, suit charge to the top of the pad. This is applied uh, to whole area of the pad, and we can also set safety factors on concrete sulfate and suit charge both in service and uh, in the ultimate cases. In the geotechnical section, we can set our uh, soil data, safe working pressure or uh, unfactored uh, service bearing pressure used in sizing the pad. Uh, this is uh, 200 uh, kilonewton per square meter, coefficient of friction between the soil, uh, soil and concrete base is uh, 30 percentage. No co cohesion at this time, soil density is 18, if we have a soil density, then the program improves uh, safe working pressure for deep pads. And we can also set the height of the soil above the pad if we want. This is used for calculating uh, passive pressure and the additional uh, switch charge. The auto design section allows us to set minimum and maximum uh, bar, uh, bar parameters for auto design. So we can set a minimum and maximum bar diameter and bar pitch. And you can uh, also set a minimum pad size and size increments as well. Leaving the no uplift on yes, say that no uplift of the base is allowed uh, during the auto design. So I'm going to save and close this by clicking uh, on save. But of course, the screen uh, can be accessed at any point during the design, and the default parameters can be uh, overwritten case by case if it's necessary. Okay, it's now it's doing the auto design. Okay, it's ready now. So if you click on, if you click on, uh, any column base, then we will see that the program associated uh, with the path foundation to every column base and auto size them. So, for example, in this case, uh, we need a 1.8 uh, meter square pad based on the. Yes. Uh, based on the uh, based on the the, the 200 kilonewton per square meter safe for uh, safe working pressure, we can see that uh, we end up uh, with a uh, slightly higher uh, maximum stress of 212 uh, kilonewton per square meter. This is higher than the the given safe working pressure, but as we uh, provided the solid density, uh, the program. Uh, calculated and improved uh, safe uh, working pressure, uh, which is uh, 223 now. Okay. For the reinforcement, uh, the program used the allowed minimum bar diameter and the, and the maximum bar gap. So we, if we set a step down, I'm oh, sorry, I just a minute, I just have to check my default. It seems I accidentally, yes, sorry, I turn on the, I calculated all the, the paths as mass concrete paths. So Yes, save and auto design all. Yes, so we need to auto design all of them because I want to design reinforced concrete path uh, foundations.
is still working. Okay, so let's go back to our pod. So, yes, you can see, so the, the program used uh, the default uh, 16 mil bars uh, at 300 mil. So if we, if, if you are going back to the to the pad data one, where you can uh, uh, change the reinforcement uh, parameters, then uh, we can try to step down to a 12 mil bar. Then we will see uh, that it is failing. And if we scroll down, see uh, it's failing. And this is a dimensional check. So um, yeah, the minimum is still. This is a problem, so we definitely need uh, the six tens uh, mil bars and uh, three hundred. Okay, for the design, by default, the program uses the size of the column in the model, but uh, this column field on the pad uh, data one tab allows you allows us uh, to overwrite. Uh, those dimensions and take into account, for example, concrete casing. So if you want here, we can overtype uh, the, the, the the column dimension. We can also shift our pad or center for whatever reason. Oops, sorry. But of course, it causes issue uh, in our uh, pressure. Okay, let's move forward to the pad uh, data two tab. On this tab, we can override the default surcharge density and uh, safe uh, safe uh, working pressure uh, for this uh, for this uh, for this pad uh, if you want. But now I I will uh, I am using the the, the 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 global values now. I'm going to use the global values now. Uh, in the in the wall groups, uh, we can add additional wall loading. Uh, to the pad, if it def if it defined which faces of the the foundations the walls uh, of the uh, uh, which faces of the foundations the wall exist uh, with this uh, checkbox, then the load as in kilonewton per meter unit. Otherwise, the load is assumed to be a total uh, intensity uh, in kilonewton. So, for example, if we add type in a tank uh, tank kilonewton now. And you can see this is a this is an overall uh, load. However, if you set any of the phases uh, of the pad, and if and you can also define some eccentricities as well, then you will see that now uh, the, the the provided load is now in kilonewton uh, per meter unit. Okay. On the brief steps, sorry, on, on the pad uh, data one tab, uh, there is an option uh, to copy the pad details to another pad. So if we are happy with our current design, then we can copy this uh, to another uh, uh, column base. Alternatively, we can copy uh, these details to all the all the visible paths on the graphics. So for example. If you want to, uh, if you want to copy this pad details to all the column bases uh, on grid four and grid five, then first we need to filter uh, to those columns and then press copy uh, to visible button. However, from uh, Master Series uh, 2022, there is a smarter way to do this called concrete design groups. Using the design group, a group of pads can be designed for the same size and reinforcement. The concrete design group can be accessed directly from the master series, uh, sorry, the master frame the main design menu. Or when we are here in the, in the concrete design area, we can uh, open it using this icon in the bottom left corner of the graphic screen. There are separate groups for beams, columns, and paths. 
So let's select the path now and name it to grid four and grid five, for example. When we create a new design group, then we have an option to override the, the various uh, global parameter for this current group. So we can overwrite uh, any of the parameters. But now uh, I'm happy with the global ones. In the, in the general section, uh, I will set this parameter to yes, because I want to make rebar and size the same for all the paths uh, in, uh, in, in this design group. And then edit and remove mode. I will select the column base, the column bases on grid four and grid uh, five. So let's go back. Sorry. So let's go back uh, to the design area. And now, and now if we select any of the paths uh, from this uh, centric created and design group, then you will see that the program highlights all of the uh, uh, all of the, the other uh, all all of the other paths uh, included in the in the selected group. Okay, uh, so let's auto design them. And then we will see that all the all the parts in the group will end up having the same size and reinforcement based on the dominant one. So it's finished, and now you can see we have the same parts for all the column bases. Okay. So this is uh, the the the, the path foundation design module. What we don't have in this module is when a path supports uh, two columns. However, we can do this using uh, a finite element surface. So using um, using the using uh, modeling uh, uh, the path uh, using uh, a finite element, using a finite element, and using uh, subgrade modulus, uh, we can design it. You can even do this within a power path as the included limited uh, surface. Okay, so let's move over this so concrete design. Going back to the design I'm gonna choose that is so this is the pack of uh, designer. The user interface is pretty simple. What we can see on the left side is a seven pi pickup. However, currently it has it hasn't been added to any to any column base. If you turn on the show foundation, I'm sorry, I forgot to save it. Anyway, so this is uh, hasn't been associated. So, but, but uh, before we associate it, let's quickly see uh, the parameters. So, let's say uh, I want to have a two pipe backups, and I have a 450 pile, and the working load is 900. The pile design itself. Uh, is not undertaken in the master series, so we simply enter the capacity uh, uh, for check. I'm gonna leave uh, the spy and the, the pi spacing on the default three, as I'm gonna design friction pies, and friction pies uh, shouldn't be closer than uh, 3D. In apply mode, let's place this uh, pi cap uh, to, a, to a column base. As we can see, it's failing, and the problem is if you scroll down a bit, 
the problem is the the strata angle is too large uh, for the for the beam theory. So uh, so the so the beam theory is, is our is our current design method. So we should uh, be using strata and tie rather than uh, the beam theory. To change the the design method, let's go uh, to the design tab, design method tab. Design method can be a beam theory, as mentioned, or strata and tie, or a comparison of both methods. So we have the option to select minimum or maximum uh, from uh, the design comparison. When using the beam theory, there is an option to use uh, the beam theory too, and uh, in strata and tie. There is an option to check the, the concrete compression zone, assuming its width uh, to be the same diameter as that of the pile. Uh, when piles are greater, uh, when piles are greater than uh, three uh, diameters apart, uh, and is still outside the three diameters bands, uh, is ignored. So let's switch to strut and die. Now it works. Coming back to the design, I'm gonna reduce uh, the overall uh, depths to something more sensible. So let's say uh, 750 deep, and it's still uh, working. So let's go back to the first tab, and now we can see that it's worked out uh, for our load case one, which is the dead plus live, which is really Okay, but of course, as we have several load cases in this 3D model, we need to design uh, for the dominant load case. By clicking on this button, we can scan for the critical load case in the current brief. And as you can see now, uh, the load case eight uh, is the dominant one, but uh, our backup uh, still okay. In the detailed design, of course, the program gave us the calculated pile loads, axial, axial min moment uh, per pile. Let's look at the reinforcement quickly. The first thing is that we are using uh, 32 uh, 40 concrete and uh, 500B steel. Cover on the top and the side is uh, 50 mil on the bottom. It's uh, uh, 75, and we are using and we are using uh, the 150 mil default overhang, which is usually enough for uh, cover plus the tolerance of the piles. And uh, the and, and and the bar reinforcement um, is, uh, are the, are the same uh, in both direction, so it's uh, uh, 25. Uh, mil bars at, at 200. So let's try to reduce um, to smaller. And now you can see it's already failing. So now it's it's giving us both uh, area and uh, percentage error now. So we definitely need uh, the 25. Uh, mill bars. So uh, uh, the the, the backup uh, model, the backup model is very straightforward. So let's see what happens when you are piling adjacent to an existing building. In this case, you do not have uh, your column constraining to your pile. So uh, let's go offset. Uh, let's go offset it in the in the x uh, direction with 400 mil. So here you can see both on the graphics and in our detailed design. So now you can see it's failing. So what what can we do to improve? So we can go back to the to the main reinforcement tab, and we can use 32 uh, mil uh, bar. Or we can reduce uh, uh, the bar centers. 
Yes, so 25 mil uh, bar at uh, 100 uh, works. But let's go back uh, to my default. And, and, uh, and the third option is to make it um, 200 mil higher. Yes, this is a deeper, deeper pad or deeper uh, cup back up and it uh, works. Okay, so, yes, so let's say, uh, ready uh, with our design. Of course, uh, in, the, in the Path Foundation design, we have, we have an option uh, to copy uh, our uh, paths uh, design uh, to other uh, positions as well. And if you want, uh, we can schedule and export uh, both of our pie cups and pass design. So by clicking on the export button, you can export the pie cup outline along with the reinforcement uh, as designed in the program. So we have an option here. Yes. So we have an option here uh, to export our pie cup design uh, into a DVG file. Uh, with all the all the reinforcement by clicking export menu by clicking on the print schedule button you can also schedule the reinforcement yes schedule so here is uh, is the, the, the master SE bar scheduler. So here you can see uh, the bars, weight per bar, weight per element. And here you can see the huge shapes. So we have only U bars. Okay, so that was the, uh, the integrated uh, PyCup design in the master series. But of course the PyCup designer is also available as a standalone version. So it's the same program. So you can use or you can purchase it uh, as a standalone uh, uh, piece of program as well. So ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would like to thank everyone to attending today. I hope you enjoyed and learned uh, in this presentation and see you on, uh, on our uh, next webinar. If you have any questions, you can get in touch with us on our uh, usual channels. If, if, you, uh, if you want to try out the software, just go to the Master Series website, fill in the request uh, to do so. After the webinar, please do not forget to fill in the short uh, one minute survey to let us know how you like the webinar. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for attending and have a great day.